Welcome to lesson 3 of the GAMS training. In this third lesson, we will review the general rules for writing a GAMS program, continue to familiarize the user in the GAMS language, and introduce basic data manipulations in GAMS. First, we review some general rules seen in lesson 2. Recall that GAMS is not case sensitive. This gives the user greater flexibility in formatting. For example, you may choose to put keywords in capital letters, but any combination of upper and lower case letters would mean the same to GAMS. Blanks and end of lines can be used freely. This facilitates the organization of the program according to the user's preferences. For instance, you might choose to align the different items of the code as shown in this example, or leave blank lines between parts of the code for clarity purposes. All types of parentheses can be used, as long as the opening and closing symbols match. You can use simple parentheses, square brackets, or braces. As we have seen in lesson two, you must declare any element before using it. For this reason, sets are usually defined first, followed by parameters, variables, and equations. Although it is not always necessary, it is good practice to end every statement with a semicolon. This is true for declaration statements of keywords, such as set, parameters, variables, and equations. It is also good practice for data assignment and calculations and equation definition. A statement can begin anywhere on the line except for comments and dollar control statements. A dollar sign at the first position introduces a specific GAMS option, for example, title and exit are GAMS options. An asterisk or a star at the first position indicates that the line is a comment and should not be processed. Note that it appears in light gray in GAMS IDE. Next, we cover some rules about the GAMS language. Here's the list of characters allowed in GAMS. The alphabet A to Z in capital or lowercase format, digit from zero to nine, and special characters, which in this slide are enclosed in the gold square. You can also find a complete list in Table 3.2 of the User's Guide. In a GAMS model, symbols are grouped according to their type. Set usually refers to mathematical indices. Parameter corresponds to given data whose values are not affected by solving the model. Variable correspond to endogenous values that are affected by the solution of the model. Note that a variable can be set as exogenous. We will cover this feature later in the training. Equations describes the relationship between different variables and parameters. Finally, model is a set of equations to be solved. Each symbol is introduced by using a specific declaration statement. In the following table, we will list the various symbols on the left and the corresponding statements on the right. Set has for statement set. Alias is a statement that declares different names for a previously declared set. The symbol parameters has for statement parameter or scalar if the parameter has zero dimension, or table if the parameter has two or more dimensions, and so on. The syntax for declaring a symbol generally follows this structure. 
the symbol type keyword, followed by the identifier or name, followed by the domain in parentheses, and the text. All statements end with a semicolon. And although optional, adding explanatory text is good practice to document a program. When declaring a symbol, names or identifiers must follow these rules. They can be up to 63 characters long. They must start with an alphabetic character. They can include both legal, alphabetic, and numeric characters. They cannot contain spaces. They cannot contain special characters except an underscore. They cannot be GAMS reserve words. This is a list of reserve words in GAMS that cannot be used as identifiers. A complete table of reserve words and symbols can be found in Table 3.3 of the GAMS User's Guide. When defining a set, the elements or labels must follow similar rules. They can be up to 63 characters long. They must start with an alphabetic character. They can contain both legal alphabetic and numeric characters. They cannot contain spaces. They cannot contain special characters except plus, minus, and underscore. They cannot be GAMS reserved words. These rules are relaxed when labels are defined between quotes, single or double, in which case the only limitation is the number of characters allowed. The following list are GAMS reserved words that cannot be used unless defined between quotes. These are examples of illegal labels and how to write them correctly. On the left, we have listed sets using illegal labels, and on the right, we show the correct writing. In the first example, San Diego has an illegal space. One way to write the label correctly is to put the name between quotes. Another way, as we saw in lesson two, is to put a hyphen. In the second example, the ampersand in fish and chips is illegal. We use again quotes. You can use single or double quotes as long as the opening and closing quotes match. The last example uses GAMS reserved words. We also use quotes to make them legal. Descriptive text that follows identifiers and labels must also follow the following rules. It must fit on one line. It can be up to 80 characters long. It cannot start with a reserved word unless the text is included in quotes. It cannot start with a double dot or an equal sign unless the text is included in quotes. It cannot contain a semicolon, a comma, or a slash unless the text is included in quotes. When processing data or defining equations, programming usually involves the use of mathematical operations, which can be grouped into three main categories. Arithmetic operators, indexed operations, and mathematical functions. The following list includes arithmetic operators used in GAMS. Addition is noted by the plus sign. Subtraction by the minus sign. Multiplication by the star or asterisk. Division by a slash. Exponentiation by a double star not separated by a space. The usual operator precedence applies. Multiplication and division take precedence over addition and subtraction. Exponentiation takes precedence over multiplication and division. 
You can perform other operation over a set, the summation, the product, a minimum, a maximum, and the syntax is as follow. First, the indexed operator, followed by the set and expression in parentheses and separated by a comma. Examples will be presented later in this lesson. In addition, GAMS provides several mathematical functions, such as logarithmic, trigonometric, logical, and so on. But they are not covered at this point of the training. You will find a complete list of available functions in Table 6.1 of the GAMS User's Guide. Next, we review data manipulation in GAMS. In GAMS, the sequence of operations is fundamental in assignment statement. Let's take as an example the following program. The same symbol can appear on the right-hand side and the left-hand side of an equal sign. At this point, the value of the parameter dij would be twice its initial value. Now let's define the values of the other parameters. Let parameter cj be the sum of a set i of parameter dij. In other words, the sum is over the rows of the table dij after each element of the table has been multiplied by 2. So the first element of C is now equal to 40, the second to 36, and the third to 62. Note that the result of an indexed operation over one set has the same dimension as the expression less the set over which the operation is defined. So the dimension of C is that of dij less i, the set on which the operator is defined. The parameter bi is a product over set j of parameter dij. In other words, the product is done over the column of dij. Remember that each element of the table has first been multiplied by 2. We get the following results, 4400 for the first element of B, and 19200 for the second element. Note again that the result of an indexed operation over one set has the same dimension as the expression, less the set over which the operation is defined. Finally, let a parameter a be the maximum value of parameter dij. In other words, a will take the value of the element of dij with the highest value. Remember that each element of the table has been multiplied by 2. The resulting value is a 40. Again, an indexed operation can be performed over more than one set. In this case, the set are put in parentheses and separated by a comma. The result will then have the same dimension as the expression, less the sets over which the operation is defined. So parameter A has zero dimension. Assume now that the value of parameter D is redefined. Here we assign to dij the value of parameter A. In other words, all the element of dij will have the same value. A scalar can be used on the right-hand side of an assignment expression for an index parameter. It will give the same value to all the elements of the parameter. Here we assign to dij the value of parameter bi. Then all the columns j of g will be the same. In an assignment expression, you could have a parameter with less dimension on the right-hand side than on the, on the left-hand side. 
as long as the set used on the right-hand side is also a dimension of the parameter on the left-hand side. Similarly, if we assign to dij the value of parameter cj, then all the rows i of d will be the same. Again, the parameter on the right-hand side of the assignment expression has less dimensions than the parameter on the left-hand side. This is fine as long as the set used on the right-hand side is also a dimension of the parameter on the left-hand side. Some general comments. When the value of some parameters are derived from other parameters, it is good practice to enter the original data explicitly and to compute the derived parameters using the GAMS code. This way, if you need to make changes, only the original data needs to be changed. The related parameters will change values without further changes in the GAMS code. If using more than one operator in the statement, remember the precedence rules. If in doubt, use parentheses. Do not forget the multiplication sign, the asterisk or star. This sign is often absent from mathematical writing, as in our example. Often, errors are related to mismatched domains. Remember to check the dimensions on both sides of the expression. It might sometimes get confusing when matching parentheses in long statements. Here are a few tricks that might help. Use different types of parentheses. The first line might be easier to read than the second line. You can also change lines and align the parentheses or use the match parentheses tool in GAMS IDE. The shortcut key is F8, or you can press the tab shown on the screen. This concludes lesson three of the GAMS training.